Aloha everybody and welcome to part 10 of the Sonic Rush playthrough and now we're at the Zone 3 boss which is actually known as the Egg Scarab! Yes, the Egg Scarab. So we're going to continue on with the Q&A and uh, our next question is from Mr. Andrew Elliott and he asks, Great Clement, do you prefer cake or pie? I will always choose cake over pie, I'm afraid. There is nothing better than good old chocolate cake. You could go, oh, well, I have chocolate cake, but I also have apple pie, and I'll be like, no, chocolate cake. Blueberry pie? No, chocolate cake. Peach pie? No, chocolate cake. <laughs> I am a cake man, so I, ch I prefer cake over pie. Question number 10 from Matt Russell. Clement, why are you so damn good at Sonic games? Practice! Lots and lots of practice. Okay, the thing that people gotta remember, I'm an old dude. Uh, I've been playing games since I was like five. And I just kept playing games throughout school, throughout high school, throughout, you know, work and everything. And I just, I... It hasn't left me. I keep playing games. I generally play a video game at least once a week and when it comes to Sonic well Sonic you know like I said it's one of my favorite things you know Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is like my favorite game there are just certain things I'm used to I'm used to spin dashing I'm used to how springs operate and generally how the le the level layout is and when it's gonna take you and where you should stop running and blah blah blah, blah. Uh, it's just all about practice. You know, if I was new to Sonic, and I, it was like my first year playing Sonic, I'd probably suck at it, but, you know. It's a lifelong journey, this this whole Sonic fandom thingy, whatever. <laughs> Question number 11 from The Other Holly. Are you going to do more skits in the future? I quite enjoy them, and would like to see more. Uh, so some people may remember that back in the day I had like a few skit videos like um, how Clement spent his summer uh, how Clement how be Clement becomes a big brother and uh, I had fun making those with my friends um, and just somewhere along the way I just sort of got like focused on the LPs and I just got my friends sort of did their own thing and they sort of we got a little bit more distant. And, uh, you know, with work and stuff, I can't really get schedules out of my friends all that much. That's pretty much why the skits don't really happen too often. It's because I have to depend on the weather, I have to depend on them ha being free on a certain day. Um, and it's just, that's just the way it is. I don't really have friends who are free to do anything whenever. Uh, so, that, it's kind of why the, you don't see too many multiplayer playthroughs out of me or you don't see too many skits out of me. It's really just because I need more friends. <laughs> I, I openly admit that I'm a bit of a loner, but uh, the friends I do have are generally always busy, and I don't want to really bother them too much. And, you know, there's some skits I just haven't really... I haven't really got a good grasp on, on what skit I would like to do right now, so maybe in the future I'll have another skit video. I don't know. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, time will tell with that, I guess. Question number 12 from dorko for you. Hey, Clement, is there anything you could say about your avatar? Like, did you draw it or what? That's my question. Uh, my avatar for my YouTube channel, for my Twitter page, um, that was all done by an artist known as Sparkhog. Uh, and it's actually a small part of a bigger picture. Um, because I have collaborated with this uh, YouTube group known as Brain Scratch Comms. I'm sure some people watching this channel know who they are. And uh, Sparkhog made a big, giant Brain Scratch Comms uh, picture with all the personalities on there. So it's not just uh, my my persona. It was like all of them. And I just really loved the drawing that he did of me in an eggmobile holding an egg bomb with that smiley face. I thought that was like the perfect kind of look, the perfect kind of cartoony look uh, that my character, the Great Clement, uh, would be about. So I, I contacted him, I, I asked him, would it be alright if I use this as my, my avatar for Twitter and stuff? And he said yes, so, um, you know, 
that's where it comes from. DeviantArt, uh, a user named Sparkhog, and uh, I have a DeviantArt page as well. I don't actually draw anything. I just favorite uh, drawings of me that are made, and um, there's a lot of great stuff out there. I love when people draw me fan art. It's crazy. It's crazy humbling that, you know, I'm just a guy who talks over a, a video game. Like right now, what you're watching, Knuckles being suspicious of Blaze, and me talking about other bullshit that has nothing to do with the game itself. There are fans who, who want to watch me do that. I have 60,000 subscribers, whereas other YouTube channels might have less, and th that's crazy to me. You know? I'm internally humbled, and, uh, you know. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but thanks a lot. I mean it. It's, it's crazy. Question number 13 from Jay Tug Tugudin. Tugudin? Tugudin? I don't know. How do you get cool hair? I don't know. How do you get cool hair? If you're commenting on my hair, I, I just have a really good head of hair. It's both thick. It It becomes a really good position after it's wet and after it's been like brushed around and everything uh, I just have some really great kick-ass hair I don't really know what to tell you I shampoo I shower <laughs> I uh, I don't shower too much you know I generally I don't shower every day I shower like once every two days like Monday I'll shower and then I don't shower on a Tuesday but Wednesday I will shower that's my that's how I have found I find that like I don't really get stinky until like two days later so maybe that helps if you're showering every day maybe the water kinda does something to it I don't know but that's what I have found and that's what I do Super King Let's Plays Question number 14. Why don't you look me in the eyes when we make love anymore? Look, Super King, uh, I didn't want it to say it, you know, on this YouTube video. Um, you're just... You're not as romantic as you used to be. Quite frankly, I find you boring. Uh, you know, you're always leaving the toilet seat up. Uh, I was absolutely appalled when I heard that you liked... Uh, one thing about Sonic 06. Uh, and, you know, to me, I, I just see you as something of a whore now. You're, you're just a piece of meat that I take advantage of. And uh, I'm just going to call it quits now. I'm going to use this video to, to say that we're done. So uh, don't take it personally, Super King Let's Plays. It's just... It's not you. It's me. It's me. Number 15, Electric Echidna. What are some of your favorite video game soundtracks? Um, well, I think everyone knows that Sonic generally has the most kick-ass music, and I'm always raving about the soundtrack. This very game that we're playing, Sonic Rush, I'm always going like, Ah, oh, Hideki, your music is amazing! Ah! Um, but when it comes to games I haven't done a playthrough on, the Final Fantasy series from Final Fantasy IV to Final Fantasy X is seriously amazing work. Nobuo Uematsu is probably my my favorite uh, video game composer. The stuff he does in Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII is remarkable stuff. It's stuff that I still listen to on a daily basis. Even just like the simple things, like the town themes and stuff. Like I'll listen to Balam Town or Fisherman's Horizon or. Um, the railroad area in Final Fantasy VII. You know, I just love the music. He, he always pours so much atmosphere and so much heart into everything that... if you Even if you think it's like a kind of a bland RPG that's not that fun, the music involves you in the world, and it's so, so great. Um, I love Anamanaguchi, and so when they did the entire soundtrack to Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, that soundtrack was just perfect. There was no song on that game that I did not enjoy, and uh, that that made me pumped for a big, awesome beat 'em up. So Scott Pilgrim was great. Uh, there's this indie game called V V V V V. I think you can call it V Six or just V or V. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce it, 
Uh, but the music on that game is phenomenal. It's 8-bit, uh, really heart-pumping stuff. Uh, there's a lot of games I could name that have amazing soundtracks, if I can be quite honest. Uh, I love video game music. I always have. I, I could listen to Kingdom Hearts and be like, yeah, Kingdom Hearts music's kick-ass. You know, I could listen to uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and be like, oh my god, the music in Revengeance is so good! I just love all kinds of music, but uh, if I'm going to go for my absolute favorite, uh, Nobuo Oyamatsu and the Final Fantasy stuff, that's always been like, ma, that's art. You know, that, that's stuff that gets you into this, into this game like crazy. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd have to go with that, but there's so much. Video game music is awesome. Who doesn't love video game music? Who watching this channel would not listen to video game music in their car? I mean, you just have to be a super lame person not to listen to video game music in your car. You know. Nerds. Anyhow. <laughs> Question number 16 from Michelangelo Yoshi. What was your least favorite subject and teacher? And what was your favorite? So I think the question's basically, what was your least favorite subject in school? And what was your favorite? I'm not going to name my teachers, because that's just mean. I didn't hate my teachers. Okay, I had some teachers I hated, but, you know, I'm not going to name drop them. Oh, by the way, this is... THE EGG TURTLE! And, and you know what's fucking weird? In Sonic Rivals, the first boss was known as the Egg Turtle as well. So... There are two Egg Turtles, one in Sonic Rush and one in Sonic Rivals. So how about that? But anywho... Um... My least favorite subject, and my favorite subject. Uh, least favorite was always French. Uh, French is a really hard language to learn. I always felt lost um, learning. Like, sometimes the teacher would be talking about something, and I just have no clue what she's talking about. Like, even when it comes to, like, math and geography, I could at least understand what she's talking about, what the teacher would probably be talking about. But when it comes to French, I'm just like, oh, there's so many consonants and so many you know, adjectives and stuff you gotta add before this sentence, and it's just like, oh, I don't want to learn a second language. Fuck it. Uh, I, I finished French early in high school, and I never looked back. I do not know it as a second language. I knew enough of it to pass the class and get my credit, but uh, I'm not touching that ever again. Uh, it's, it's complicated stuff. Um, and as for my favorite, well, that would be, have to be drama. Because, you know, that's what I kind of focused on in high school. I was in a lot of drama festival club stuff. And uh, I was even the drama president at one point. Uh, and that was just way fun. Like, I don't even think that was much of a learning class. I'll be honest and say it wasn't much of a learning experience. But uh, it was tons of fun. And it was a great way to get to know people. And um, all, my, all my fondest memories of high school was drama, so uh, definitely my favorite was drama. Um, <laughs> my favorite class wasn't going to be anything that was hard work. Come on. Come on! Anywho. Question number 17 from Chib Maniac 2 Do you drink bagged milk? Do I drink bagged milk? Now, such a concept does exist. Um, <laughs> you can either buy it in bags, or you can buy milk in a carton. Um, I would always buy carton milk, and I would always recommend uh, buying carton milk, because at least it doesn't get old really fast, like bagged milk does. Uh, I used to drink bagged milk when I was younger, but uh, now that I've grown up and I am purchasing my own milk, uh, carton milk is by far the best because it does not go old in, like, two days and make you feel like you wasted your money buying crappy milk that you can't drink. I don't know, maybe that's just where I live in Ontario and that's just my milk supplier, but, um, no, do not drink bagged milk. It's the worst thing in the world. You do not want it. Anywho, that was the last question for this part. <laughs> I will see you in part 11.